Section 11 of Astounding Stories 11, November 1930. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Astounding Stories 11, November 1930, by Various. Science Facts, A Hundred Miles Underground. Scientists bidding their families goodbye in the morning to drop 50 or 100 miles underground in high-speed elevators, there to undertake researches not possible nearer to the Earth's surface, may be realities of the next decade or two if some wealthy individual or institution accepts the recommendation of Dr. Harlow Shapley, distinguished astronomer of Harvard, in a talk recently before the American Geographical Society. The Earth's interior, Dr. Shapley said, is the third dimension of geography. Exploration of the planet's surface soon must cease from lack of places to explore. Even the upper air is coming to be reasonably well known scientifically, thanks to instruments sent up with balloons and to the radio and other investigators who have been uncovering secrets of upper air electricity. But the interior of the Earth is still one of the great mysteries. It is a paradox of astronomy that much more is known about the center of the sun, or a star like Sirius, than about the center of the earth. Deep shafts of boreholes into the earth have been suggested often as sources of heat for human use. It is doubtful, however, whether such heat supplies could be obtained. For one thing, the supposed internal heat of the earth is still nothing but a guess. It may be that the relatively slight increases of heat found as one goes deeper in existing mines are due to radioactivity in the rocks instead of to outward seepage from the internal fires. Another difficulty about utilizing earth heat is that heat moves so slowly through substances like rock, as any housewife can prove by trying to fry an egg on a brick placed over a gas flame. As soon as the rock heat immediately at the bottom of a borehole had been exhausted, heat supply would stop until more could diffuse in from the sides. Dr. Shapley's suggestion, in any event, is not to search for heat, but for facts. Even in existing, relatively shallow mines, he believes, scientific laboratories at different depths under the surface might yield valuable data not now obtainable. Most scientific men will agree. Revolutionary as the idea may seem to those familiar only with the standardized laboratories of physics or chemistry, there are sound reasons why a half dozen or so of the sciences should do precisely what Dr. Shapley suggests. At least one underground laboratory has already been installed, for Professor E. B. Babcock of the University of California has such a workroom in the Twin Peaks Tunnel, underneath the mountain that rises above the city of San Francisco. Natural radioactivity in the rocks thereabouts is greater than normal, and Professor Babcock finds that this apparently increases new species among fruit flies. To dig out laboratory rooms a mile or so down in existing deep mines probably would cost far less than many enterprises already financed by philanthropists. Even to deepen these shafts for several miles would be much less difficult than most people imagine. Increasing heat if it is found that heat does increase, would not be difficult to overcome had the engineers sufficient money. Ventilation and transportation to and from the surface, while too costly for the business enterprise of winning metals from very deep mines, probably would present no serious difficulty were facts the chief object instead of profit. The only question to be decided before intending benefactors of science are urged to consider some such project is whether or not the facts likely to be won promise enough value to mankind. An excellent case can be made out for answering yes. Dr. Shapley mentioned four chief lines of investigation suitable for such deep mind laboratories. Studies of gravity and of the variable length of the day, researches on the various kinds of earthquake waves, experiments on ether drift, and tests of the biological effects of cosmic rays and of the rays from radium. Astronomical theories indicate that the day ought to be growing slightly longer as the Earth's rotation decreases a trifle from century to century because of friction from the tides. 
The actual length of the days seems, however, sometimes to be decreasing a tiny fraction of a second from year to year, as theory says that it should, sometimes to be increasing in a way for which no present theory provides. Observations underneath the Earth, with a portion of the planet's crust and gravity overhead, might yield important clues to the cause of this mysterious wrong time kept by the terrestrial clock. End of Science Facts A Hundred Miles Underground Recording by Karen